All right, here we go. Shake, rattle, and hum. Cups up. Toast to the Morning Word crowd. Pastor Randy here with you guys. Thank you for being here live. And if you're watching recorded later, God bless you. And uh, God bless America. We want to give a shout out to all of our school teachers. Back in the grind now, baby. Uh, to all of our military personnel, to all of our first responders, police and fire, thank you for what you're doing. And um, it's getting tougher every day, but you're doing a good job. Thank you for it. Our morning word this morning is a captain and a cause. We are back in 2 Samuel. In 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 23. <clears throat> and uh, the writer here uh, is telling us, it goes back now and makes mention of some mighty men of God. Now, you probably haven't heard any of these names. Uh, and if you have, you probably read them just once and didn't pay any attention to them, but these are mighty men of God. Now, I'm going to, um, I want to read uh, 1 Samuel 22 for you to kind of give the setup for you, so don't turn there if you have your Bible. I'm going to read 1 Samuel 22, verses 1 and 2. Then we're going to come up here and we're going to talk about some of these men, all right? In 1 Samuel 22, David is running. He's already been anointed to be the king, but he's not king yet. And he's running from King Saul. He's running from King Saul, and he runs up against the Philistines. So he's between a rock and a hard place. He's got King Saul that's trying to kill him. And then he has the Philistines that are trying to kill him. And so uh, <clears throat> when, when he goes out and leaves the city of Jerusalem to go out into the wilderness to hide, we call it on the lamb, there's some men that went with him. And here's what it said in 1 Samuel 22. David therefore departed from there, and escaped to the cave of Agilom. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain. That's our key word. He became captain over them. He became their leader. And there was about 400 men with him. Now, that number later grew to about six, 600. And you hear me say all the time in reference to David's mighty men of valor. He had about 600 men that followed him, and they were almost every battle that they got in, they were outnumbered, but they kicked butt and took names. And these are men that uh, chose to side with David uh, because David gave them a chance. You see, David gave them a chance. It says that they were... They were in debt, they were in distress, uh, they were disheartened. These were people who just, for whatever reason, okay, life had just not dealt them a good hand. They, they, uh, they were broke, busted, and disgusted. They had nothing, they came from nothing, and they were going nowhere. And uh, these were just no-namers. But guys, listen to me. Uh, maybe I should have used this phrase for the morning word. They were no-namers, but they were game-changers. I mean, they were no-namers, but they were game-changers. And they found in David a leader, uh, and, and in him a captain and a cause. They, they found in David a captain and a cause, meaning that <clears throat> when David's life was going down, what he was hoping to attain was worth, the, was worth their lo loyalty. See, David gave them a chance. I'm going to say it again. David gave them a chance. And that chance that they got from David, they received from David, was worthy of their extreme loyalty to the, to the death. Every man in this book uh, 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 that's mentioned <clears throat> here that's following David had one character trait in common. They, they all had discontented paths, distressed paths, so forth. But they had one character trait. They were loyal to the death. All that mattered was that David ascended the throne. All that mattered was that David was kept safe and that David succeeded. And that was their cause. David was their cause. And David was their captain. And so it goes on here and it says in 1, 2 Samuel 23, these are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Now you're not going to recognize these names. Josheb Bathsheba, the Tachmanite. Chief among the captains. Chief among the captains. Listen to this. He was called, he was called Adino the Esnite because he had killed 800 men at one time. I want you to get that. 
killed 800 men at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Aoite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated, and he arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to plunder. And after him was Shammah, the son of A.G. the Hagarite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of, uh, of ground full of lentils, that's beans. And so the people fled from the Philistines, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Inside, he goes on and <clears throat> name another feat that they did. They broke through a Philistine garrison, went to Jerusalem, got some water from the well of, in Jerusalem that David was longing for and just happened to mention in the cave, man, he'd love to have some of that water in Jerusalem. And these three guys broke through a Philistine garrison, got into Jerusalem, got the water and brought it back to him. And David said, I'm not going to drink it. it was, it's worth the blood of my brothers. And he poured it out. He said, I, I can't do it. I can't take advantage of them that way. So out of David's 600 men, he had an inside circle of 30 and then an inner circle of three, an inner circle of three, an outer circle of 30, and then a great circle of 600. And most of these men you would not know by name. They were mighty men of valor. And they had a captain and a cause in David himself. And see, David came along and found these men. And, and as the scripture tells us here, they were in debt, uh, in other words, they were being hunted down to pay their debt or, or to be incarcerated. They were distressed. That carries a, the connotation of anything and everything that's a hardship. And it says, and they were disheartened. They just didn't, they were just ready to quit. They could see no purpose in life. And David came along and asked him if he wanted to go along, and they loaded up. And in him, they found a captain and a cause. Now, <clears throat> I've always been enamored by the military, and not just the military, but people who make great sacrifices to do great things. But you find a lot of those stories in the military. And I, be, I like to read stories of heroic acts. You know, people like Audie Murphy, um, people who, uh, you know, go into gunfire when they're told not to come and rescue all their brothers and, um, and get them out alive, get them out safe, or how one guy or two guys or three guys held off a hundred guys, you know. True stories, Medal of Honor winners. Uh, I love to read those stories, and I love to read those sacrifices because I can see in those guys uh, something that, that potentially lies within all of us, but very seldom, if ever, is tapped, and that is people um, who are willing to do anything and everything for their brother or for a cause. I mean, an intense... Uh, indescribable sort of brotherhood, loyalty, devotion. And uh, <clears throat> I posted on Facebook not too many days ago, you know, the picture of a Marine lying in the casket and probably his wife or his mother leaning over the casket looking at him. He's in his full dress blues and his hands folded. And uh, they, they give his name. And uh, when I see that, first of all, I'm stirred with emotion and uh, awe and gratitude. But then it just really does fire me up too then to see people trample that flag and, and to kneel and disrespect our country like it's going on. And I don't, I don't want to get off on that tangent, but uh, at, I'm stirred in one way to, to, towards their great devotion and in another way it gives, makes me angry that people would disrespect that. But I love to see people uh, and I love to read stories of triumph and victory and uh, overcoming by people who find a cause uh, and a captain that's greater than themselves, and they're willing to lay down their life for it. They'll, they'll do anything and everything, and that's what these men did. You don't know them, see? You don't know their names, but it doesn't matter that you and I don't know their names. David knew their names. See, David knew their names. And God knew their names, and he said, I'm going to put their names in there. Now, see, when you read First and Second Samuel, the names that stick out to you are Samuel, Saul, David, Jonathan. You know, those are the big names. Those, those are the ones who carry the theme of the story, see. But behind them are, are the Josheb Bashebeths and the Eleazars 
and the shamans. And you don't read about those guys, except here that, that God makes mention of them. God preserved their name. This is what's, a, when I think about this, man, I just get stirred. God said, you know what? If I don't put Shammah's name in there, nobody's ever going to know. Now, I know, but I want people to read about that man's name because behind David's successes was men like Shammah and Josheb and Eleazar. And so much so that they were singled out. They were singled out for their greatness. And uh, God said, I want, you to, I want people to know that there were great men, great men behind uh, David the king. And, um, and we too today in the United States of America and all around the world, <clears throat> we have a captain and we have a cause. The Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And he is the cause. He himself is the cause. And I'm just wondering if you and I might be able to muster up just a little bit of the loyalty that these men had in serving David, uh, in serving Jesus. I mean, is Jesus not the greater captain? And is his name and his kingdom not the greater cause? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, we'll bleed, we'll die, we'll rescue, we'll go into bullets to pull our brothers, you know, out of the jungles of Vietnam or out of the sand dunes of Iraq or out of the mountainous crags of Afghanistan. I mean, and I'm stirred by that, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm so thankful for that. But where, where is the same kind of sense of loyalty that we should have for, for Jesus, our, the captain of our salvation? I mean, where, when are we going to lay it all on the line? When are we going to say, you know, it doesn't matter what happens to me. What matters is what happens uh, is the name of Jesus. You know, that's what those guys said. I mean, you, I want you to think about this. This guy, this guy goes out and he's fighting. It says all day he arose and attacked the Philistines till his hand was weary and his hand stuck to his sword. They had to come pry a sword out of his hand. And there's a guy standing out there and he said, hey, we're outnumbered. He goes, hey, don't worry about it. I'll take 800 of them myself. 800 men in a single battle? And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what was that man thinking when those guys came out from behind the trees or the rocks or up out of the ditches and started descending on him by the dozens? Oh, well. I mean, you know, I'm in. Count me. He's already in. <clears throat> and the Scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 that some of these men did great exploits and then some of them uh, refused to be uh, given special treatment. They took martyrdom. They died. They were sawn in two. Um, they they suffered great loss. And here's what it says. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. You just stay right there. I'm gonna go to over in Hebrews 11 because this this is an astounding. And I I mean, it's just I can't hardly really wrap my head around it. I mean, I can, but I, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I'm going to go over to Hebrews chapter 11. Okay? And it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Watch this now. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. God made, the, God made sure when the, the, all this scripture is inspired by the a breath of God by the Holy Ghost. God said, I want you to write down that the world was not worthy of these men. The other day, 
I met a young lady. She and her husband had been in China as missionaries. 10 or 15 years. China, the government, um, caught one of their missionaries. They're all there under other titles and names, doing other jobs as a cover, but working for the International Mission Board Baptist. And um, all her children were born over there, this this couple, man and woman. All their uh, children been born in China, but China got a laptop, called a missionary, got his laptop, hacked it, and got, a, got the name and address of every per, every in, uh, Baptist missionary in China and came to them and said, uh, you can't stay here, you got to get out, we know who you are, and don't ever come back. And when I say told them to get out, they didn't like get to pack their stuff. They had to go home, get their purse, their shaving kit, and get on a plane and get gone. Well, they came here. <clears throat> I know their mother and father, this this girl's mother and father. I was When I met her, I'd heard about her, but I, her mother was standing there next next to me. And they, uh, they have kids at North River. And... Uh, and she and her husband were here staying, and you guys probably know who I'm talking about here. And her husband died. He was outside in the yard exercising while they were here and uh, fell over dead. And uh, so here, here's this woman, this missionary. Now, I'm talking about men, but I'm, when I was talking about men, I'm talking about men and women. Uh, this, here's this woman that's been giving her life to the Lord, serving God by serving as a missionary in China. And uh, is forced out, comes home, staying here. Her husband falls over dead. I mean, in his 30s. Falls over dead. And there she is with three kids. You know what that woman did? You know what she's, you know what she's done? And I was talking to her. She told me. I said, well, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going back to the mission field. She said, I can't go back to China. They won't let us back in. I said, you're going, I'm, I'm talking to her just like this, and I, I'm sure this look came on my face. I said, you're going back to the mission field. She said, I can't imagine anything else. She said, this is all I've ever done. This is all I know. This is all my children know. I said, well, where are you going? She said, we're going to Taiwan. And she appealed to the International Mission Board with the Southern Baptist Association, and they had to waive. They weren't going to let her go, but they, made a, they waived, gave her a waiver. Because she told him, she said, this is what I do. This is who I am. This is all I know. I'm not sitting here in the United States of America. Right there with her mother. Her mother and her father are living here, raising their grandchildren because she has a, another family member that's in distress and whose lives fell apart. She has a chance to raise her kids up now next to her grandmother, her mother and father, their grandmother and father. No, no. Mm -mm. We're going to Taiwan to live for the rest of our lives. You see, she has a captain. And she has a cause. And the world is not worthy of people like that. We got people running up down the street saying, my rights, my rights. Disrespecting me. captain in a cause men and women of whom the world was not worthy those are the ones that God knows by name let's be one of those how about that see you tomorrow good Lord willing and the saints don't rise peace out